well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, thanks for that kind of introduction. I've uh, been talking with Parham and James here for the last uh, half hour. It's good to know them, get to know what uh, uh, ICIT is, uh, on the Institute for Critical Infra Infrastructure Technology. So thanks for inviting me here today, especially to speak after lunch. So tr try your best to stay awake, get a little bit more tea, maybe a shot of pure sugar cane, and you'll be good to go. Um, now, I realize uh, many of you have good insight into the United States Air Force and what we're doing every day uh, in the AOR against our adversaries, but I wanted to provide you a little bit of background as the uh, Air Force's Chief Information Security Officer. My bio is in the, uh, the pamphlet you got, so uh, I had a little bit of, of that in my speech, so I'll forego that, but I, would, I just wanted to let you know, I, didn't know, I don't know if you didn't realize this about the Air Force, but I am just one person, or we like to call ourselves airmen, one airman of about 660,000 airmen, uh, active duty reserve, Air National Guard and civilian. We have a budget of nearly $140 billion, and we have never been busier. Uh, we are globally engaged in airspace and cyberspace. Uh, we have five core missions in the Air Force. Air and space superiority. We control the skies and leverage space. Intelligence, reconnaissance, and surveillance. Um, rapid global mobility, so all the cargo, refueling, and air medical missions that are occurring every day. Uh, global strike, that's our nuclear enterprise, and command and control. Uh, these are the front lines I am ultimately responsible for as the CISO to ensure we stay strong in all areas with respect to cybersecurity and information dominance. Um, so a little bit of background. So I have been in the Air Force for quite a long time. So in the nearly 30 years, I have served in the Air Force in both an active duty and civilian capacity. I have never been, I've never seen threats more sophisticated and diverse across all domains from a broad array of nation state and non-nation state actors than I have seen today uh, in 2017. Uh, this is especially true in cyberspace where all the challenges are evolving faster than anywhere else in my opinion. Um, let me offer a few facts of life for the Air Force uh, from a cyber perspective. Uh, and they, these are not purely cyber, but you'll, get, you'll understand what I'm talking about here in a second. So many of our systems were designed in an age when cybersecurity was not a concern. Uh, for example, our legacy platforms like our F-15s and B-1s that were designed in the 70s and 80s are being upgraded to utilize computer systems governed by millions of, light of lines of code. Our programs tend to have complex supply chains with a constellation of primary contractors and subcontractors, and many of our systems share data across multiple mediums, like data links between fighters in our combined air operation centers, or between remotely piloted aircraft and their operators in the United States. All of these facts present a broad attack surface that our adversaries can and do try to exploit. We are also seeing adversaries use cyber attacks to achieve multiple different objectives, from data breaches like those of OPM, and the DNC to the generation of kinetic effects like we witnessed in the Ukraine power grid attacks. So the proliferation of internet connected devices or the internet of things is making routine non-military devices potential targets for listening, establishing patterns, stealing data, and as attack vectors for weapon systems. Witnessed the incident in October of last year when malicious actors utilized internet connected devices to launch a DDoS resulting in many popular websites being made inaccessible for parts of the country, affecting our way of life. With all these facts as a backdrop, we are trying to build an innovative approach to cybersecurity in the Air Force through an operational lens at all levels of the Air Force, from operations to people. We recognize that cybersecurity is not simply an issue for a particular system or platform. It is not an information technology problem. First and foremost, it is a mission problem for our Air Force with a massive people education and enculturation challenge attached to it as well. We are a very mission-focused organization and our success is increasingly reliant on a robust cybersecurity posture. So we're gonna go after this by focusing on three core areas that overlap and definitely work together as I've seen here in the last uh, two years, three years. Um, first is building cyber defense in depth. Second is creating a cyber secure workforce and three is acquiring cyber resilient systems. Now let's begin with defense in depth. Defense in depth means utilizing a layered defense strategy to make it difficult for our adversaries to get access to our systems, fully recognizing that dynamic attackers will continuously attempt to find a way in. 
We need to be able to stop attacks who have access to our networks from being able to affect our platforms and systems and not just our IT networks. Success requires an innovative, coordinated, operationally focused enterprise approach to cyber defense and mission assurance now and into, th into the future. When we take into account operational risks and make informed decisions on what to do about these risks, this approach is a must pay and a must do for our Air Force. Static certification and accreditation documents and set and forget IT systems are a thing of the past. We must constantly evolve, update software, patch vulnerabilities, rethink access controls, constantly patrol our information and the cyberspace that our information lives in and relies on. We must continually evolve to stay left of boom and ahead of adversary attempts to disrupt, deny, deter, and exploit our access to cyberspace, the internet, our mission, and our business systems, and our digital identities. The cyber systems we need to defend come in several categories, and we have found it useful to consider our systems as traditional IT, operational, I o operational technology, or OT, platforms as each type requires unique defenses within our overall approach. Our approach to effectively defend all our cyber systems include IT-based defense in depth, resiliency, and active defense of those systems. Cyber resilient systems are essential to missing success for the Air Force in the modern world, and a single approach will not provide the most robust defense possible. Okay, defense in depth in our traditional networks, which represents the initial defense, blocks most attacks, particularly the less sophisticated ones. Without solid, basic IT defenses, too many strikes will get through for resilient systems to handle. Without good defense in depth, active defense will also fail because defenders will be overwhelmed and unable to separate and find sophisticated attacks in the mass of noise. Resiliency offers assurance by keeping missions functioning despite some enemy success, and they will get in. It prevents adversaries from fulfilling their objectives and attacking friendly systems. No defense is ever completely effective, so without resiliency, defense in depth is required to best close the gap of an impossible standard of catching and stopping every single attack. Active defense with cyber airmen and professionals patrolling mission enclaves, finding and responding to sophisticated enemy forces, such as advanced persistent threats, involves monitoring and responding to adversaries within a friendly network space. Without active defense, the high-level adversaries who slip through our IT-based defense in depth will have unlimited time to examine our systems, discover our resiliency measures, and determine ways to bring down even well-constructed resilient systems. And only if we combine all three approaches can we attain robust mission assurance and effectively mitigate operational risk to Air Force core missions in and through cyberspace. This combined approach plays to our cultural strengths and experiences in joint warfare and can achieve a lasting competitive advantage in and through cyberspace for the United States Air Force. This effort needs to go beyond our IT professionals. That is why we are focused on the second area, creating, educating airmen who are prepared to operate in this contested domain. For example, over the next few years, we will train 1,700 airmen, a little bit more than 1,700 airmen, to support United States Cyber Command through Cyber Mission Force teams. At the Air Force Academy, we have set up an innovation center called CyberWorks, where our cadets can work hand-in-hand -in -hand with industry, interagency partners, and academia, coming up with ideas to go after real problems the Air Force faces every day. Um, the Cyber Squadron Initiative, where the Air Force CIO is taking the lead, is transforming communication squadrons into cyber squadrons at our Air Force bases. These are the active defense entities at the tactical level of warfare I previously talked about in defense in depth. Private industry constantly red teams their critical cyber environments, and when they find problems, they fix them within days, hours, or even minutes. We should do the same. There is value in adopting that strategy across DOD, as we did with recent launch of DOD Vulnerability Disclosure Program and the Hack the Pentagon initiative. Since everything in the cyber world is connected, we need to focus on cyber hygiene. And that is why across the enterprise, we launched a comprehensive cybersecurity program. The goal is to create a self-sustaining, self-aware, and evolving Air Force cyberspace culture of empowered individuals who value cyberspace and know its mission-enabling benefits as the desired end state of our airmen with regard to the cyber domain. As part of the Chief of Staff of the Air Force Forum Task Force Cybersecure that I've been leading for almost two years, 
team CyberSure, led by the Air Force Safety Center, examined issues that affected the cyber culture of all airmen, leaders, service providers, cyber warriors, and users. Some of their recommendations included growing and developing a cyberware workforce, providing strategic communications on cyberspace to the workforce, developing and implementing better cyber-oriented strategy and innovation, and recruiting and retaining experts in cyberspace. Moving a culture is not easy, and it will take time, but it's not rocket science, okay? It starts with a short conversation on the threat. I'm gonna put threat in capital, capital letters, T-H-R-E-A-T. Now, you in this room are steeped in this threat awareness, so most of you probably know this already, but cyber threats are real, right? We all know that. We need to increase the awareness across our entire internal Air Force and across the DOD to avoid exploitation and reduce risks to ourselves and our missions. The average military member probably doesn't think about this every day, but we are indeed monitored and watched by our adversaries. And they will probably read everything they can about this conference and look at the videos and see what people are saying. If you hold a US government cl security clearance, you and those and you identified in your SF-86 are targets for malicious cyber activity as a result of the massive OPM breach a year and a half ago, two years ago. Attempts to obtain our information and disrupt our missions have always and will continue to occur. In 2016 alone, Air Force networks blocked, or comm enterprise networks blocked 1.3 billion attempted malicious connections. That's over 40 attempted intrusions per second. AFNET and DOD networks continue to have cyber incidents, predominantly because of spear phishing email attacks from cyber hackers. We are constantly being probed and we are constantly being attacked. We are beginning cultural engagements with simple messages such as challenge out of the ordinary emails, strain requests for information if you weren't expecting it. Even in our personal social media lives, we are being monitored. From LinkedIn to Facebook, we are being monitored. Our adversaries are watching and they are learning. We are a nation at war, although it doesn't seem like it sometimes because we're here in a nice little ballroom. But they are watching us and be mindful of wary and friend requests from anyone you don't know, even attempts to reach out to get to know you or connect for networking. You should always scrutinize every one of those, especially people you've never seen or heard from or met be mindful of Facebook pages and LinkedIn groups masquerading as official pages of groups you would identify with, like an official F-22 Facebook page or a, an official RPA warrior homepage where you can share your experiences and war stories and get to know others. <laughs> Check the sources, ask your colleagues, go to the extra mile before accepting and joining and blindly blogging whatever comes or tweeting whatever comes to your mind on mission, okay? Be careful, it is real. Uh, the third element of our cybersecurity vision is cyber resilience, and this starts with our acquisition processes in which we need to focus on acquiring cyber secure and resilient systems for the future, while simultaneously enabling our current systems to become more secure and resilient. The cyber adversary is betting on an unchanging static environment to do their hacking and do their <coughs> exploitation. We need to be constantly and regularly upgrading software, patching, thinking of new ways to secure our platforms, relooking at our admin rights of individuals, <clears throat> and constantly on patrol. It is no longer set and think and forget about it. This is the new norm. You've gotta be watching all the time. We also need a defense industrial base to take notice of this new paradigm and change their processes and how they interact with government through innovation and new thinking. This includes suppliers for mission systems, logistics systems, medical systems, personnel systems. We need defense industrial base to think about security first and consider cybersecurity when coding software securely. And it is, a it is a necessity, it is not an add-on, it is not a Gucci expense requirement, it is a must-have. Cybersecurity is not an end of the production line add-on like floor mats in a car. It's not at all something we should pay extra for as a nice feature to have. It must be mandatory for everything we, mo we build moving forward starting today and this year. Those that can bake in and really build cyber resilient systems and can demonstrate that will be winners in the new cyber area era. We will no longer accept cyber vulnerable systems because you didn't state it in the contract. And so it'll cost you another 50 million. 
no, we are not gonna do that anymore. We need industry's help to build our collective intellectual capital. We cannot reinvent the wheel for each system or platform. It takes an enterprise approach. I ask each and every one of you to tell this to every person in your company to help us change culture or your industry or your forums. Challenge everything you see when it comes to the systems you're building for the Air Force and for the government, for the Department of Defense. If you see a Windows XP or 7 box boot up, challenge senior leadership on that. XP is unsupported and should be upgraded as soon as possible. Win 7 is not far behind and will be replaced and needs to be replaced by January of 2020. Cybersecurity isn't just having the newest technology, it's understanding threat and vulnerability, it's questioning the safeguards in place and striving to make them better. There's antivirus on computer. If there is no antivirus on computer, ask why. If there is no updated signatures, ask why. If you're a system administrator, be proactive about improving your security posture. But most of all, we need more agility in acquisition systems. We need to acquire systems more quickly and build in the flexibility to upgrade them in a rapidly changing threat environment. And as a parting example of acquisition agility and our commitment to innovate with private industry is I'm gonna tell you about the develop, deployment and operation of a new product called Tanium that we did in less than one year. So Air Force's Cyber Command, 24th Air Force, recently declared IOC last month of the automated remediation asset discovery system called, which is really Tanium. The team drove an unprecedented eight month acquisition schedule to deliver Tanium that enabled operators to identify and fix network vulnerabilities in seconds instead of weeks and ability to detect, track, target, engage, and mitigate adversary activities in near real time. Tanium is the standard in which we wanna do acquisitions in the future for cyber defense and security. So the Air Force is taking some real concrete steps to build cybersecurity and make ourselves more accessible to businesses and to defeat our ad adversaries in and through and from cyberspace. With the stand-up of the CISO last September, we are taking an enterprise strategic look at what we need to address and make better with respect to policy and strategy. By focusing on building cyber defense in depth, creating a cyber secure workforce, and acquiring resilient systems, we are looking ahead to a world in which our information dominance provides us even more capabilities and prevents our adversaries from exploiting gaps in our defenses. So with that, thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope I gave you guys some good ideas and I, and I look forward to the conversations afterwards and entertain questions. Am I entertaining questions, Parm? One question. One question? <laughs> How long have you been doing this job? Well, I've been doing this job for, <laughs> since September. I've been uh, SCS for about uh, three and a half years now, going on four in July. What suit are you wearing? I'm wearing a Donald J. Trump suit. For <laughs> Thanks.